Hi, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to lesson 49 of Chef's Apprentice, learning to cook like a pro, one small plate at a time. This lesson is chestnut, pear, and sunchoke soup. Although many pureed soups will add cream for flavor and texture, I rarely use cream. Although cream will always add flavor, I believe not using cream allows the taste of the main ingredients to show through. And I don't miss the extra flavor the cream would add. And for calorie counters in the health conscious, there's less fat. This is a great example of letting the taste of the main ingredients show through, one of which is an underappreciated root vegetable called the sunchoke, also known as a Jerusalem artichoke. This is a luscious, savory soup that will taste like it's full of cream, but it has none. Techniques today are peeling, coring, chopping, and dicing, grilling, arresting, and keeping warm, sweating, deglazing, reducing, and seasoning bringing to a boil and simmering, pureeing and adjusting seasoning, plating, and garnishing from on high. So let's start cooking. Okay, let's talk about the mise en place for lesson 49, which is chestnut, pear, and sunchoke soup. We'll need to have about two cups of roasted chestnuts. Now remember, this is how to cook like a pro, so you should roast these chestnuts from scratch. There's a bonus lesson on how to roast chestnuts. Now, Chestnuts are seasonal, so you may not be able to find fresh chestnuts, in which case you can use chestnuts out of a bottle or uh, out of a package, but they should be whole roasted chestnuts that you then cor coarsely chop, about two cups. We need to have about one quarter of a cup of celery. I like to use some of the celery leaves from the top of the bunch. I like the taste. About a quarter cup of chopped celery. About a half a cup of chopped shallots about three tablespoons of olive oil. I'll eyeball that when we get to that step. We also need to have one pear, fairly ripe pear. Any uh, type of pear will do uh, that, that's been peeled and cored and uh, coarsely chopped. About one pear's worth of pear. Then we'll need to have some sunchokes. Now the sunchoke is a really weird looking little root vegetable. You may have seen them in the grocery store and thought, well, what is that thing? Uh, they are kind of like potatoes in what you can do with them. Uh, we need about we need to have about two cups of um, diced sun peeled and diced sunchokes. I'm going to peel this one later and add it to these. So we'll have about two cups of coarsely chopped sunchokes. We need to have about one half a cup of uh, white wine. I'll eyeball that when we get to it. Uh, some kosher salt and some uh, ground white pepper. We're using the ground white pepper so instead of black pepper so we don't leave black specks in the soup. We need to have about two to three cups of chicken stock. Uh, in this course we make chicken stock from scratch. Uh, there's a bonus lesson on how to make duck stock. Same thing except to use duck, uh, chicken bones instead of duck bones. There's also a bonus lesson on um, how to make lobster stock. And if you go to my website which is www.chefsapprentice.com there's a stock chart on, uh, with all the ingredients to make all different kinds of stocks along with cooking times and that kind of thing. Uh, we'll also need to have some dry sherry. Now I, I, I recommend that you get a fairly decent sherry, not a cheap cooking sherry, dry sherry. We'll need to have um, about a quarter of a cup of that, but we'll pro probably eyeball that when we get to it as well. Pink or red peppercorns that you've either cracked with the edge of your chef's knife or I, these come in a little grinder so I, so I can just grind them when I need them. About one tablespoon of chopped parsley. I've ch chopped more than that here, but you only need about one tablespoon. And then you'll need to have one chorizo sausage. Okay, uh, that is all the ingredients for lesson 49. We'll break now, come back, and I'll show you the equipment. Okay, for equipment for lesson 49, we're going to need a cutting board and a chef's knife. We'll need to have a slicing knife to slice that chorizo sausage after it's been grilled. A peeler to peel the pear and the uh, sunchokes. We'll need to have a saucepan to make the soup and a wooden spoon. We'll need to have a blender, and today we're using the Ninja blender. Uh, we'll need to have a uh, strainer and a rubber spatula to push the soup through the strainer. We need to have a skillet, which we have here on the stove, and we'll need to have a sizzle plate for the to keep the uh, uh, sausage warm, and a ladle to ladle the soup, and then we'll need bowls. Haven't picked the bowls yet, we'll do that later. That's all the equipment. We'll break, come back, and start cooking. Okay, the first thing on our prep list is to sweat the mirepoix in olive oil with salt and white pepper. Remember, mirepoix is usually carrots, celery, and onions or shallots, sometimes garlic. Today we're using um, 
just the shallots and the celery. We need about three tablespoons of olive oil. We're just gonna eyeball that. Put it on to um, medium heat. Add the uh, shallots. Add the celery. Just lightly salted, because we're gonna be uh, seasoning the other vegetables as well. And just very lightly white pepper. Remember, white pepper goes a long way. Don't use too much. You can always add it, can't take it out. We're gonna stir that up so, it's, so all of the mirepoix is coated with the oil, and we're gonna sweat that. Remember, sweating means to cook until the uh, moisture is basically sweated out of the vegetables and they become uh, translucent. Okay, it's been about, oh, I'd say three minutes. Vegetables look like they've been uh, sweated nicely. Now we're gonna deglaze with white wine. And we need about a half a cup. I'm just eyeballing that. We're gonna let it uh, reduce until it is almost dry. That'll cook off the alcohol. It'll also concentrate the flavors. Okay, so our, our pan is deglazed. The uh, white wine has mostly evaporated. It's almost dry. Now we're going to add chestnuts. The pear. Sunchokes. And stock to cover the vegetables. Some kosher salt. We'll adjust the seasoning later. So again, go on the light side. You can always add more. And a little bit of white pepper. Mix it up. Now you're gonna bring this to a boil. Then we're going to reduce the heat and simmer it. So I'm gonna turn the heat up so I can bring it to a boil. Then we'll reduce the heat after it starts, after it comes to a boil. Okay, our soup is just coming to a boil. We're gonna reduce the heat down to um, medium and we're gonna let this simmer until the vegetables are soft. And the, and the vegetables uh, that you really have to check is the sunchokes, they're the hardest of the three things that are in there. Uh, we, you wanna be able to pierce them easily with a, um, a toothpick. Now, this is gonna be cooking and uh, the um, broth is gonna be, or the stock I should say, is gonna be evaporating. So uh, if uh, it starts to evaporate down below the level of the vegetables, add some more stock or water so that the um, vegetables are covered by the stock and um, stir it occasionally. So we're gonna let it cook, let it simmer until those vegetables can be pierced easily with a toothpick. Okay, so it took about 30 minutes to get those vegetables so that they were um, soft. It's gonna depend though on your, um, your stove and your heat. All right, now we're gonna puree this. Remember, we always put a towel over the top because the pressure could pop the top open. Okay, let's see how it looks. It looks like it has a nice uh, pureed consistency, kind of soupy, good, perfect. Next thing we're going to do this is strain this back into a clean pot. I'm just going to clean the pot that we used and strain it back into that. Okay, so now we're going to strain this back into the clean pot. Now you want to clean your spatula and then clean off the bottom of the strainer.
Now at this point we want to thin this if we think it needs it. I think this is actually a good consistency, especially since we're going to add some sherry to it. So I'm not going to thin it at this point. And I don't think it needs any more salt or any more pepper. I want to add about a quarter of a cup of sherry and stir it up. Let's taste it. Mm, good. You want to just have a hint of that sherry coming through. Now we're going to put this back on the stove, bring it to a boil, and simmer it to cook off that alcohol. All right, now if it had needed thinning, uh, we could thin it either with more stock or with water. And then after thinning it, uh, you, you'd thin it first before you put the sherry in. And after we thin it, then we would um, put the sherry in and taste it again. And after you put that water in, you'd also adjust the seasoning at that point. But we didn't need to add any. So um, what we're doing now is we're bringing it to a boil, just to a boil. As soon as we start to get some big bubbles, we're going to turn it down to a simmer. Okay, we're just starting to get some uh, large bubbles, so we're going to reduce the heat. We're going to let this simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay, it's been simmering for about 10 minutes. Let's taste it. Mm, very good. We're just going to keep this warm until we're ready to serve. Okay, next step is to grill this sausage. We're going to put it on uh, medium heat. Add a little bit of olive oil to the pan. Then we're going to add that sausage. We're going to grill it all around. Now if the sausage splits open, that's okay because uh, we want it to be thoroughly cooked and we're going to be dicing this anyway to put into the bowls. Okay, so this looks like it's cooked pretty well through. We're going to let this rest for at least five minutes. Turn off the heat. Alright, next thing we want to do is to dice the sausage. To do that, if the sausage is hot, we're going to hold it with the um, tongs and slice it. But what we're trying to do is really break it up. We're not looking for slices. More of a more of a crumble. Okay, now, if you are not going to serve right away, keep this warm until you are ready to serve. Make sure it's above 140 degrees so it's not in the danger zone because this is sausage. Then we're going to come back in a moment and uh, plate up. Okay, now to plate this dish, we're going to need bowls, of course, and we're going to put a small amount of the chorizo down into the center of the bowl. Now, if you're serving six people as a small plate, you've got to divide this chorizo among six people, so you're going to have to use your judgment. Probably made it, and there's enough soup there to serve more than six, uh, so if you're serving eight, you'll have to divide it uh, appropriately so that you have enough for eight people. Okay, now, uh, then we're going to take the soup and now I can plate it up here right like this, and then we can take it to the table, or you could plate it up at the table by pouring the soup over the chorizo. Now, the advantage of doing it this way here and then, and then serving them is that um, uh, it's easier to do the garnish, uh, which is the last step. So that's going to be a little bit of um, parsley from on high. Remember, that gives a nice distribution. And a little bit of the cracked red or pink peppercorns. Okay, that is the conclusion of Lesson 49, Chestnut Pear and Sunchoke Soup. You can see photos of the final dish at my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice Cook Like a Pro. Next up is the midpoint of this course, Lesson 50, which is a ginger 
parsnip soup with chorizo. So you're going to be reinforcing the skills that we're learning in this uh, in this soup and some of the others that we've done. And by the time we've done this and maybe a couple more soups, you will have mastered soup. You can make a pureed soup out of anything. So please remember to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.